Well, hello and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Now, we're going to race for the finish line this time and just see if we can get there. See if we can get the ending. I know it's not going to be the ending we all wanted, but it's going to be an ending. And it's going to be overly dramatic and it's going to be loads and loads of fun. So, let's get cracking on, shall we? Time dragged on deceitfully slowly, but it's 5 p.m. already. It's common during the summer. If one counts the seconds and minutes, it appears that even a single hour would never end. But if one thinks of anything else, then the whole day flies by so quickly. I decided to start packing. They could leave without me. I quickly took all my winter stuff and shoved it into a bag. I was almost about to jump onto the bed again, but the door opened and Olga came in. Oh, I see, you're packed already. That's great, let's go. I got up reluctantly, grabbed my simple luggage and followed her. I really didn't care what will happen next. I had long suspected that nothing was up to me in this world and recent events had reinforced my complete confidence in this. I might wake up tomorrow in bus number 410, or I might not wake up at all. Or I might wake up in that uh, urine-soaked alley again, but man, that was a fun night. And that's all, folks. It's all that simple. There's no point in staying here. There's nowhere to run. I keep on telling you that. Basically, my only exit is to leave on the bus with everyone else. Go into the unknown. But that's all I've been doing for the last week, stumbling along a narrow path in pitch black darkness, unsure where is the beginning and where is the end. We were almost approaching the gates when I heard someone calling my name. Simeon, Simeon. Olga. Excuse me, just a minute. Okay, but make it fast or we'll leave without you. I headed for the bushes the voice came from. Samyan, Samyan. I walked through the thick greenery and came out onto a forest path. The voice seemed to be calling from nowhere. One minute it was heard behind a tree, and now it seems to be behind my back. I'm right behind you. Don't worry about there. Probably it's one of those aliens from Parallel Worlds. But I suspect that I haven't met this exact one before. We don't have much time. I'm listening. I know that you've already been contacted by him. And him. Yeah. And I know that they've been told... I know what they've told you. Don't ask me how. Okay, I wasn't planning to. But you know, must know one thing. The thing I know. There's more than a dozen of us here, in fact. There's more than a thousand. But a lot of people got out. I, I tried to digest what he said and phrase the right questions. Then why are you here? I stayed. Why? To help others find an exit. Wow. How generous. How stupid. And why would I, should I trust you? You're the third one already. Well, in fact, I'm not even sure that you aren't all just my hallucination. It's not about trust. It's about listening to Mr. Elephant. Then what is it about? It's about the right choice. Consider this camp to be a giant maze. You should take a few turns to find an exit. Okay, and how do I know which ones are right? She's called Lena. You will know. Come with me. Where to? To the second lap. Hold on a sec. That pioneer says that my second lap will start tomorrow. He lied. The speaker raised his voice. He's gone completely crazy and he's trying to destroy all the others. 
So if I don't go with you and leave on the bus, then I'll be destroyed, right? I don't know. Then why do you say so? Nobody's ever returned after a conversation with him. Listen, why should I trust you? I was definitely on the edge. While that pioneer just mocked me and didn't seem to be a real danger, this one clearly spoke about things being anxious, things worth being anxious about. I couldn't decide which one I sh should I trust. The problem is, like trying to get a blind man to say whether the light in the room is on or off, he can only guess. Just like me. Hurry up, time is running out. Hey, wait a sec. Make a choice. Are you coming or not? Ooh. Let's follow the voice. I don't know where this is going to take us, but let's find out, shall we? Okay, let's go. Anyway, he sounded more credible than the crazy pioneer. Of course, this solution could be fatal, but the alternative isn't any better. I just took a shot in the dark. Okay, so where are we going? We're already there. My eyesight started to fade and I felt my consciousness leaving me. Achievement unlocked! Epic fail! Semyon bad end. Okay guys, I'm gonna warn you now, okay? I understand this is pretty grim. I will fully understand if you guys do not like that. And don't want to watch it, so let's see. save did we keep the auto save no <laughs> day seven day seven day seven day seven that one Okay. Do not follow the voice. No. You know what? I can't just believe you in only a couple of minutes. At least I've Kanonma. At least I've known the other guy for a little bit longer and his arguments seem more weighty. You'll be sorry. These words sounded like they were coming from another world. The voice seemed to disappear. Of course, I couldn't be sure whether my choice is right or wrong. It's a bind guess enforced by a time limit. Nevertheless, whether I'm right or not, we'll find out soon. In a couple of minutes, I was standing at the bus stop with all the other pioneers. Everybody's here, began Olga. You're leaving our camp today, and I'd like to tell you something in parting. Semyon shared a cabin with me for a whole week and didn't try to molest me once. She was visibly nervous and desperately lost for words. I hope that you'll remember the time you spent here for a lifetime, and you'll retain only pleasant memories about Sovyanok. I also hope that you became a, at least a little bit better, managed to learn something and found new friends. 
just come back next year. The camp leader looked away. It looked like she was trying to keep the tears inside. I didn't expect her to get so emotional. Although her speech sounded like complete nonsense to me, as usual. The pioneers started to crowd into the bus, babbling cheerfully. I decided to hold on a little and say a proper goodbye to this camp. Goodbye, camp. All of a sudden I felt a deep urge to throw a coin. Of course, there's no fountain here, and honestly, I didn't feel like returning, but it's still just a superstition I didn't believe in them. At least, I've never believed in them before. Digging through my pockets, I found only a couple of candy wrappers, a pencil, and a scrap of paper. I held them for a moment, and then I squatted and put the paper on the ground and scribbled a few words. You are here for a reason. Grinning at my stupidity, I threw the scrap under the wheels of the bus and got into the cabin. I found a place in the middle. But the strangest thing is that everyone sat in pairs and only I was alone. However, what's the difference now? I'll either disappear or we'll restart everything in a couple of hours. The bus was slowly moving towards the district centre, occasionally bouncing over the bumps in the road. It was impossible to see anything beyond the old windows in the pitch black dark of the night. Anyway, I couldn't care less about the surrounding countryside. I just sat and waited for the inevitable. For the first time in a long while, my head was completely empty. The pioneers around me enjoyed the trip. Yelana and Elisa were playing cards. Lena was reading a book and Slavia was sleeping. Miku was trying in vain to start a conversation with Zhenya, and Zhenya was trying really hard not to start killing people. Electronic and Shurik were crafting something, as always. I was the only one completely ignored by everyone. It might be slightly far-fetched perception. I got used to the role of being the centre of the universe in the camp. I thought that everything revolved around me. Well, it might be so up to a certain degree, but here and now, I'm only a foreign object. An out-of-place molecule in the harmonic pattern of a crystal grid. I'm not sure how long we spent on the road, but sleep had already started to overcome me. I was desperately fighting Morpheus, trying to stay awake as long as I could. After all, it's quite possible that today is the last day of my life. Then probably it's reasonable to cling as hard as I could to these few hours of meaningless, useless existence. However, physical fatigue and, more importantly, emotional fatigue took its toll and I fell asleep. Ah, we actually get an ending. A sharp pain throbbed through my entire body and not in a good way. I felt it especially sharply in my temples. It feels like they are ready to shatter into a thousand little pieces, giving the wind free access to my empty head. Probably I would not have been able to stand even five minutes of such torture if I hadn't opened my eyes in time. I was... somewhere. It was impossible to tell precisely where. My mind was clouded in mist, my thoughts were confused. The moment between the unconscious and conscious states when you vividly remember your dreams. I was going somewhere by bus and was about to doze off when suddenly a girl came up to me and began to speak quickly. I couldn't understand a word, but the girl looked very upset. I failed to understand what she needed from me. Time passed and she kept talking on and on. It was getting really annoying. I wanted to ask her to cut it out or at least calm down a bit. But I failed. 
either because I didn't manage to say anything or because my words didn't reach her. I couldn't even see her face. I was simply listening and staring and staring and listening. Perhaps it wasn't important for me then. Surely you would not try to remember what a mosquito disturbing your sleep looks like. Surely you wouldn't manage to recall the frequency of its flapping wings or the inclination of its proboscis after that. And this girl is just one of millions of voices that disturb you from concentrating, from thinking, from falling asleep. The louder her voice grew, the harder it got for me to catch her words. The bus cabin, the seats worn by time, the uneven floor, the rusty ceiling, the cracked glass of the windscreen. Everything was floating away, along with her. Then I felt a unique sense of relief. It didn't matter how real the bus and girl had been. It was nothing but a bug to me. And here I am hanging in total emptiness and falling inside a dream. Whoa. Dreams can be really something. Not quite a nightmare, yet definitely not something pleasant. I got up rubbed my face to get back to reality, gave a loud yawn and prepared to clean myself up. It was a really grey morning. Unable to find my hygiene kit on the nightstand, I concluded I could manage without it. It was hard to get dressed, my hands were trembling like hell. I looked at my reflection in the mirror and checked out my two weeks double. Well, perhaps Olga has a razor. It was only when I went outside that suddenly I understood that I was not in a pioneer camp and I probably shouldn't have stepped off the balcony. I'm back in my apartment and I've just come out of my room into a passageway, not in, out of the cabin. I was overwhelmed with surprise, with dismay, with fear, even with terror. But how? I sat down on the bed and buried my face in my hands trying to remember the chain of yesterday's events. Yeah, the bus, the last day of term. Yeah, I fell asleep. And woke up back home. Well, to some degree, it might seem quite logical. It seemed that the initial astonishment had worn off during the first few seconds. After all, the fact that I came back like this after a week-long absence is no stranger than my sudden appearance in some pioneer camp of the 80s in the first place. The events of the last two days flashed before my eyes in an instant. That mysterious pioneer, his words, Alyssa with the clothes off, Yulana with the clothes off, <laughs> but how did I manage to get back into to reality then? According to him, I was going to be stuck there forever as there is no exits. On the other hand, I wasn't alone. That pioneer at the bus stop and the mystery voice emphasized the contrary, that the exit exists. Does that mean I found it? I managed to get out of the endless loop? But how? Nevertheless, I wasn't sure whether I should rejoice or grieve. Over the last week, I kind of got used to the everlasting inner monologue the search for answers in the in-depth analysis of everything. So I simply couldn't accept this fact as it was without figuring out what exactly happened to me. Sure, he told me that I'm the only one who has observed the existence of the other guys like me during their very first loop, but does that really mean anything? Anyway, all his theories and ideas instantly collapsed like a house of cards. Now, I had to decide how I should react. Of course I should rejoice. After all, I'm back in the real world. Maybe the last seven days were just a dream. Indeed, there's absolutely no evidence I really was there. 
I don't see my pioneer uniform anywhere. I look my age just like I did before. My phone is on the table, fully charged. But one can't deceive one's own memory. One can't live through such terrifically real experiences in a dream. I still remember the events of the whole week in great detail. Perhaps I was in a coma all this time. An ironic laugh escaped my lips. Nah, that's not an option either. Then all's well that ends well? The last few hours in the camp flashed through my mind. Indeed, I wasn't hoping to get out, either from that camp or from reality, and I was pretty much ready to another week. And another. And another one. I'd accepted my role, I'd reconciled with my destiny. And what was I supposed to do after all the stuff that happened? I heaved a doomed sigh. Got up from my bed with considerable effort and went to my computer. That's weird, but according to it, only 14 hours have passed since my disappearance from this world. Not a whole week. A new message in the instant messenger. Hi, Semyon. Yesterday. It was legendary. See you later. My college friend. It was him who invited me to the party with the rest of his college friends that I was going to attend. Suddenly, all my senses came back to me. The headache, the dizziness, all the symptoms of a hangover. It looks like I indeed attended the party yesterday, and I was partying hard. So there was no pioneer camp? But then, when did all those memories, emotions and feelings come from? All of this was so incomprehensible that I became enraged. I began cursing foully, trying to tear my hair out and hammering on the keyboard with my fists. I didn't return to a normal state until there was no keys left on it. Why should I care so much? Nobody worries when a dream or a hallucination ends. Moreover, people are usually glad when it happens. Was I really that prepared to stay there that my return to reality became so undesirable for me? Then a simple and obvious thought crossed my mind. Perhaps I'm just going insane. Indeed, madmen frequently have visions they proceed as reality. Besides, I had all the symptoms of insanity. I never leave the four walls of my prison. I never socialize. I have lots of psychological problems. I've met Yulana. Well, that explains a lot. My dark, nervous laughter echoed in the room. Guess it's the right time for me to visit the therapist, or rather a psychiatrist. Or should I just surrender myself at the asylum? Semyon. A horse! A horse! Half a kingdom for a horse! I cried at the top of my lungs between bouts of manic laughter. Dispute not with her! She's a lunatic! The racket my neighbours made on the wall calmed me down somehow. If I'm tripping that bad, it looks like only a lobotomy would help me. I just sat completely freaked out for several hours, doing nothing, thinking nothing, just staring at the monitor, long since gone to sleep mode. Finally, I moved the mouse and opened a few tabs on the browser. So what's new? F5! F5! As if the events of the past week had never happened. Come on. Do you have to grieve for a hallucination? Was it real? Sure. Lots of memories? Sure. Looks true enough? By all means, yes. Any proof? No. The verdict is clear. As my future course. I have long suspected that my current lifestyle wasn't doing me any good. I wasn't ready for such an unusual event, but so what? I have to be more prepared for my next trip. Night. An endless stream of threads and images took my mind off my lamentations and considerations. An instant message window popped up almost unexpectedly. Hi. How are you doing? Sure. Quite an original way to start a conversation. Doing fine. 
The contact's profile was completely empty, not even a nickname, just a nine digit number. You can't guess what kind of person on the other end just by looking at a number, can you? Sure, someday it'll all be different. Unified digital identifiers instead of names, a couple of symbols for a biography, several bytes of personality, and three and a half bits of feelings. Get home safely? Probably someone from yesterday's party. Seems like it. Do you remember everything I told you yesterday, right? Well, I guess not. There was another message after a long pause. I see. Honestly, I don't give a damn who this is and why he is messaging me. Until this unidentified individual starts harassing me, I could easily tolerate his presence in my contact list. Well... That's okay. We'll meet again. We surely will. Sure. Looking forward to it, yeah. Alright. Bye. I didn't reply. This odd, screwed up day at last was slowly coming to an end. Going to bed, I yet again recalled in my head all the events that seemed so real to me. Where am I going to wake up tomorrow? Would these hallucinations return? Nah. I'll probably just forget everything. Strange, but now I'm really feeling that everything happening... Strange, but now I'm really feeling that everything happening now is real. There was just a fiction, a game of deformed imagination, or really something fantastical, and here is a reality. Sometimes inconvenient, sometimes it unfolds differently from how you'd wish. Surprises you like this, but it's still reality. I fell asleep with these thoughts. Bit by bit, my life resumed its normal course, and I started to forget the events of the week. After all, nothing bad happened. Even if it was indeed real, who cares? There were only seven days in a pioneer camp. I wasn't killed. Nobody kidnapped me to conduct experiments. I wasn't brainwashed. So why do I, ne I, why do I care now about the reason? And if it was indeed a hallucination, I could only hope that it won't repeat itself. I was still a shut-in. My computer and the internet were my only friends, and the keyboard was the only communication channel connecting me to the outside world. The F5 key became my, the main thing in my life again. Come to think of it, it really wasn't all that bad. Yet one day, a familiar combination of digits popped up on the screen. That strange contact of mine had come online once again. Hey! Hey. How you doing? Doing fine. Probably I knew him from somewhere, but who cares, anyway? Any news? Not really. Stability is a sign of true class? One might say so. Ah, I see. The conversation was over for me, but he didn't seem to feel like that. So nothing has changed? Nope. Should it have? Well, it's not like you you experience stuff like that on a day-to-day -day basis. Not everybody gets to, do, to experience it either. What are you talking about? Don't you get it? I was starting to. I'd prefer you to explain. Don't you remember the camp? It felt like an electric shock. All the events of that week immediately sprang up in my mind. My hands started to tremble. A cold sweat burst from my forehead. I turned around in horror, already imagining that I'd see aliens, ghosts, or the Grim Reaper. But there was nobody in my room except me, as always. I ran to the corridor, checked in the kitchen and in the bathroom. Still nobody. At last, I returned to the computer. The same message window was still flashing steadily, as if it was a perfectly ordinary message. Who are you? My hands were trembling so much I could hardly hit the right keys. Oh, so you do remember it. My hallucinations seemed to be continuing. 
Or did I never leave the camp in the first place? Or was it just a dream after all? Or... I don't know what to say. I admit it sincerely. Anyhow, I feel that this entity, that's the only definition I could think of, doesn't need any kind of internet to communicate with me. Well, you can just keep silent. Everything's perfectly clear. That smiley at the end of the line looked like the devil himself, stretching his deformed jaws open to devour me. What's happening to me? I finally made up my mind to ask that question. Nothing. Nothing at all. You're just living your regular life. But the camp, was it real? And what do you think? I'm not sure. It seemed real to you. Yes, it was real. If not, then it wasn't. It's just that simple. It's not that simple at all. What will happen to me next? I whispered. Nothing to worry about. It seemed like it really hurt me without the use of the internet. Terror chained my whole body. I closed my eyes and curled myself into a ball. Why? Why are you doing this to me? I started to lose it. Words were coming out of my mouth by themselves. A logical, meaningless set of words. Why? Why me? What for? What for? Leave me alone! I haven't done anything bad! Several minutes after I found the courage to open one eye and take a look at the monitor. You are the reason for everything. The message window was flickering coldly. And what's next? Oh, you'll see that soon enough. Everything started fading to black in my eyes. Noise filled my ears and I started to feel dizzy. I felt that my very soul was escaping its physical shell. The events of the last few days became hazy as if they all happened to someone other than me. Then the memories of the camp started to vanish as if somebody was using an eraser to thoroughly rub out words written into the pencil. Moments later I felt and sensed nothing, as though I was plunged into a state of cosmic bliss. If anyone saw me at that moment they would notice that I was smiling. Hmm, I'm kind of stuck here. I hit the report spam button, closed the window and switched the, switched the browser and glanced at the clock time to get going or I'm going to be late. Achievement unlocked. Forever alone. This is the Semyon good end. I wonder which end that is. Every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its own outline, synopsis, contents, key points, and a prologue and an epilogue. And there's no book which, if you read it again, would not reveal new details that you didn't notice before. Every story has its beginning and its end. Almost every.
Well, there you have it. Both of the Semyon endings, and I, I get the feeling one of them was cut out a wee bit because it was a touch disturbing. And not that I'm going to complain, but yeah. My understanding is that Semyon commits suicide in the bad ending, so it's possibly a good thing it was cut out. Anyway, I could have made two episodes out of this. I'm not going to. I'm going to stick all this up. You want Lena? I'm offering you Lena. You guys, if you want Lena, put it in the comments. Give me a thumb up. Give me a thumbs up, even. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you, and if you are interested, I will do the Lena ending. And then, because I'm a masochist, perhaps I'll offer you the Ilana ending. We'll see. Anyway, until the next time, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you, and good night.